he eateth not and giveth God things. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For whether we live, we live unto the Lord, and whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord of both the living and the dead. But why dost thou judge thy brother? Why dost thou set it not, thy brother? For we all shall stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then, every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Fathers, we come to you this morning. Lord, we're thankful, Lord, for another privilege, Lord, to be able to stand. Lord, to carry out your word. Father, we just pray that you'd use this message for thy glory, God. Father, we give you the honor, the praise, and the glory for it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> if I was to title this message this morning, it would be, Do Not Pass Judgment on One Another. How many times in life do we see somebody doing something and just that quick we're ready to judge them? That's right. You know, there's only one judge, and that is Jesus Christ. And we're all going to stand at judgment day. That's right. And we're going to be judged <coughs> on our life. We're going to be forgiven of the sins. We're already forgiven of the sins that we done before we got saved. Those are washed under the blood. But every failure we do from the time we get saved until the time that God calls his children home that's not been repented of will be judged for those sins. Now, the Bible tells us that we should repent daily. That's right. And we should do that. Every night before I go to bed, I thank God for saving my soul. Amen. And I ask him, Lord, if I've done something that's contrary to your word today, Father, please forgive me for it. Because it's easy to make a mistake. We're human. Right. We're going to make mistakes. And if we repent of those mistakes daily, God's going to forgive us for them. That's right. But we have to ask for forgiveness. Matthew 7 and 1 tells us, Judge not that you not be judged. Luke 6 and 39 says, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Condemn not, and ye shall be not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. That's right. You know, if somebody does us wrong, it hurts. It hurts when somebody does you wrong. But what are we supposed to do? We're supposed to forgive them. If we can't forgive people, how's God going to forgive us when we repent? And How's God going to forgive us if we're, if we're quick to judge people? Tammy told me the other day about a cousin of mine that lives out in Gastonia. Her and her husband separated. <clears throat> Been separated for about two weeks. She's already seeing another man. 
And the minute she told me I was ready to judge, I had to stop. Lord, I'm not the judge, you are. And I had to put my thought in the back of my mind. I couldn't bring it out. Because if I had her, I'd have been sinning. If I have no right to judge her. I know what she's doing is wrong, but I'm not the one to pass judgment. I mean, there's, there's things going on all the time I see in this world. And the first thing I want to do is give my opinion about it. But if I give my opinion about it, I'm judging. Now, you can judge the fruit that a person bears, but you can't judge that soul. For God said, judge not, that you not be judged. Amen? Amen. So what do we do? Well, the first thing we need to do is get down on our knees and pray for them. Ask God to convict them. If we're praying for those who are in the wrong, then we're doing our job. Now, I don't need to call up Philip and say, well, so-and-so is doing this, and so-and-so is doing that. And I think we ought to dismiss them from the church. Is that Christian? No. That's passion judgment. Now, if I'm going to use Daniel for an example. If I see Daniel doing something wrong, Instead of calling Philip and trying to spread rumors about Daniel, I, I need to be going to Daniel right. and talking to him and say, Brother, I see that you've got a problem. And I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to try to help you. If you want to talk about it, I'm here. Same goes with Philip. If Philip's doing something wrong, I'm not supposed to call Daniel up and say, well, Daniel, Philip's doing this, Philip's doing that. I think we ought to dismiss him from church. That right there is judging. If I'm going to call anybody, I need to call Philip. Hey, brother, I need to come talk to you. And then when I get there, I'll say, Philip, I kind of got an inkling that you might be straying off a little bit. Is there anything I can help you with? Anything you want to talk about? I don't go up to him and say, Brother, you're doing wrong, and as long as you're doing wrong, you ain't coming to my church. I can't say that to Phil. I can't say that to nobody. First of all, it ain't my church. Amen? Amen. Now, I know a lot of preachers that do that. Well, as long as you come to my church, you're going to walk straight and narrow way. Well, first of all, it ain't his church to begin with. And second of all, he's not a dictator. He can't tell people how to live. No. He, he's supposed to try to show them in love, but he can't just walk up to so-and-so and, well, if you go to my church, you want to do it this way. Or we're going to set you out. And there's a lot of preachers in this world that's got that attitude. As long as you're going to my church, you're going to do it the way I say it, or you're going to be gone. I've, I've, I've said under pastors that's like that, that has that attitude. And that is passion judgment, brother. It is. And it don't, it don't have to be the pastor. It could be anybody in the congregation. They see something going wrong. The first thing they do is pick up the phone. Did you, did you hear about so-and-so? Why? He or she's done things that I've never do. That's putting judgment upon someone. What we need to be doing, first of all, is getting down on our knees and praying for them. And then call them up. 
Hey, sister, your sister so and so is anything I can help you with? You need to talk about anything? I'm here to help you if you need me. Let them know that you care for them. Don't dial up the gossip line and spread something that really and truly you don't even know is true just because you heard it or you think you saw something that might not have been. You know, that's possible. We can be out some more and see something and think it's something else when actually it ain't got nothing to do with what, with what we thought we seen. You gotta be careful. We've got to have love in our heart for each and every one. Not, well, I, I don't agree with him. He's wrong. Or she's wrong. They may not be wrong. They may be doing something God told them to do. We need to be careful every day and watch what we <coughs> say about people. What, watch what we think about people. Because if it runs through our mind more, more, more times than not, it's going to escape our mind and come through our mouth. Whether we realize it or not, we could be just Talking on the street to somebody, well, I know, I know Sister Rose is doing something she ought to be doing. You know, not even realize you're saying nothing. That's possible. But we need to have love for one another. If we don't have that love, we need to search our own heart. My mom always said I've got enough trouble of my own to worry about anybody else's trouble. And that's the way we all should be. We need to be examining our own life instead of trying to look at somebody else's faults or if they're doing something wrong to look at that. Because each one of us, I don't care how close we are to God, each one of us fail every day. If you don't fail, or if you don't think you're failing, you're just telling yourself a lie. Because everybody fails God every day. I don't care how close they are. I'm sure Billy Graham failed God a lot in his life. I'm not saying he's, I'm not trying to put him up on a pedestal. He was a man just like me and Daniel and Phil and Brother Ray. I'm not trying to put him on a pedestal. I'm just using him for an instance. I'm sure he had his fault. I'm sure his son, Franklin, has his fault. And I know I've got my fault. I fail God every, just about every breath I take. I'm failing God in some way. <clears throat> We all need to examine our lives and examine our hearts instead of trying to look at everybody else and judging their heart. You know, I don't I don't know what Philip goes through every day. I have no inkling. I have no inkling what Brother Ray goes through every day, or Brother Daniel, or any of you ladies. But as your pastor, I want you to know that you can call me if you need to talk about something. And I will try my best to help you. And if you call me with a problem, I guarantee you, it will stay between me and you and God. Because I'm going to be praying for you. I'll try to lead you in the right direction. But... I don't have a lot of experience doing that, so I may fail you because I'm human. But I will try my best to lead you in the right direction, and I will definitely be praying for you if you've got a problem you need to talk about. 
I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to pass judgment on you. There's only one person who can do that. But if you know that you've got something in your life that shouldn't be there, you need to repent. You know what repenting means? Repenting means asking forgiveness and then walking away from it. Not going back and doing it the next day and having to repent again. That's not what repenting is. Repenting is asking forgiveness, being serious, and walking away from that problem. Now, Phil, I'm going to use you again. I don't like to pick on the ladies too much. But if, if Philip goes out and gets with the wrong crowd, and let's say they lead him into drinking a beer, now if he drinks that beer, nine times out of ten, he's, he's going to want another. Because he's not had it in his system for so long, he's going to start craving another one. Now, if he takes that next one, what's that going to do? Lead to another one. It's going to lead to another one. <laughs> and pretty soon, it's going to be right back where he used to be. Let's say Daniel finds out about it. Daniel gets on the phone and calls Ray. Ray Phillips is drunk. He's drinking again. What are we going to do? What's he doing? Judging. He's judging. Now, if Daniel calls up Philip and says, Philip, I hear you got a problem. I'm going to come talk to you. And he tries to. You've been there before, so you'd know how to talk to him. I'm not saying you went back, but what I'm saying, you used to drink. You, 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 you'd know more how to deal with him than I would, because I've never drunk. I don't know what it's like to be drunk. I don't know what it's like to have that urge for another one. So really, the only thing I could do is just say, hey, if it's wrong, you don't need to be doing this. Right? You need to quit this and get back in the grace of God. And get back where you can teach Sunday school and get back to where you can take care of your wife and take care of your family. That's about all I can tell you. Because I don't know I don't know what you're going through. Because I've never been there. I just can't tell you. But there's ways to handle things. There's the right way and there's the wrong way. Now, if, if I get on the phone and call everybody I know and say, well, Phil thought he was drunk. He ain't nothing but the drunk again. What am I doing? I'm hurting him. I'm hurting myself. Because who's going to want to listen to me preach if I'm downing him for making a mistake? I don't need to be downing him. I need, I need to be lifting him up. But I need to get him back on the right track. Yeah. And it don't, I mean, it don't have to be drinking. I'm just using that because I know that both of y'all have used to drink a lot. And a lot more. But it could be anything. Everybody makes mistakes. And a lot of times those mistakes will lead to another mistake if you give in to making those mistakes. Satan is on us 24 hours a day. If he ain't on you, there's something wrong. You better be checking him hard if Satan ain't on you. Because that's his job. He is to try to deceive us. It's, it's his job to mess with our minds. And I tell you what, he's on my mind a lot because 
They ain't got much of a mind left. <laughs> and he's on it all the time, just trying to make me turn the wrong way or go the wrong way or do something stupid. But that's what repentance is all about. It's asking forgiveness. And then walking away. Making sure we don't do that same mistake. A lot of people say, well, I can do what I want to because I can get forgiveness. That ain't the way it works, folks. There's millions, millions of rules in this book that Christians have to abide by. I mean, that's a, that's a strange way of putting it. But if you're going to live a Christian life, you've got to follow this book. There's no way around it. If you think that you can be saved and get out and do anything you want to and then get down and ask forgiveness, get up the next day and do the same thing over again, I got news for you. You ain't got salvation. The devil's ain't got you to see because you believe that you can do anything that you want to. And God's going to forgive you for it. If you if you pray every day, God, please forgive me for so and so. You get up the next day, and the day after, the day after, the day after, and do the same thing over again. God can't care less. He's not going to keep forgiving you for doing the same sin over and over and over. So many times. Salvation is simple. Repentance is simple. But you've got to want to get forgiveness for repentance to work. You've got to repent. You've got to walk away. Yeah? You never touch what it is you're doing. See, we're stronger than Satan. People don't realize that. We're stronger than Satan. Why are we stronger than Satan? It ain't because of us. It's because if we got Jesus in our heart, we are stronger than Satan. We've got the power to say, Satan can be my hand now. But I know what your outcome is going to be. I read the back of the book. And you're going to lose. Amen? Amen. <clears throat> God is going to destroy Satan and all his angels in, in the end. When he comes back, about the battle of Armageddon, God is going to win. He's going to destroy Satan and his angels. That right there is enough to make you shout, but it's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we as Christians, we need to watch our steps. I don't need to be worried about steps and what he's doing. I don't need to be worried about Lady and what she's doing. I don't need to be worried about Barbara. Lay her old godly hands. She needs to be looking at my life. She said, God, show me what I can improve. Show me. Going on and 
Everybody else. <clears throat> what I know, I've got problems. I'm sorry, I'm going to have to cut this short. I'm about to pull up and about to pass out. My kids have been a lot of morning. And I'm not through with this. I could go on. My body is so weak right now. I'm going to cut it short. Maybe next Sunday I'm going to take it to the altar. Is that what the Lord wants? If not, so I'm going to try to, try to do it another time. But everybody, when you go home today, be praying for me and be praying for Tony. I've not been feeling well all week. And they got my sugar under control this week with some new medicine. But like a dummy, I got up and didn't eat breakfast this morning. Because I'm used to that. When it was high, I could do that. But I'm going to have to learn to eat something. That's the message this morning. I wish I could go on with it. God gave me some more corn and honey, but we'll take that up maybe next week or just another day.